What is a brilliant move? A brilliant move is exceptionally skillful, highly creative and unexpected, leading to a significant advantage or even a decisive outcome in the game. Let's understand the concept of brilliant move with the help of this famous game played in 1852 between Adolf Anderson and Jean Dufresne. Here in the game, John's last move was knight to e7, getting his knight out of the way of this bishop and forming a battery on this light square diagonal along with this queen. Notice how this bishop and the queen along with this rook sitting over here are threatening to checkmate on the g2 square. This queen and the other bishop are also targeting this weak f2 pawn. Basically, all of these black pieces are threatening to finish off the white king. But Adolf here is a very cool headed guy. Instead of panicking in this situation, he finds a brilliant move which counterattacks the black king over here. And here in this situation, he plays the most shocking and the most unexpected move and that is queen into d7 check sacrificing his queen to launch a deadly attack on the black king. Queen into d7 is a brilliant move. And the way to write this move in the language of chess notations is by simply adding a double exclamation mark at the end of the move. If the king moves to f8, then queen into e7 would lead to checkmate. So therefore, the king is forced to take this queen. And now Adolf plays bishop f5, launching a double attack on the king King moves to e8 and now bishop d7 check, king moves to f8 and now bishop into e7 finishes off the black's game. Let's look at another famous game played between Paul Murphy and two players named Duke Carl and Count Isward. Both of these players were playing together against Paul Murphy. And here in the game, the duo players decided to play b5, attacking this bishop over here and basically asking him to go back and release the pressure on this weak f7 pawn. Now, any normal player in this situation would have taken his bishop back either to this or to this square. But brilliancy doesn't lies in playing normal moves. Sometimes you have to think out of the box and play the unexpected and most skillful and creative move. And that's what Paul Murphy does over here. He shocks his opponent by playing knight into b5. Sacrificing his knight for a pawn, the duo players took the knight and now Paul takes the pawn and gives a check to the king with his bishop. Since this knight over here is pinned to the queen, black blocks the check with his other knight. Since this knight is now pinned to the king, Paul decides to add pressure to this knight by quickly castling to the queen side. And now this rook has joined in the attacking play and is creating additional pressure on this knight. The duo players play rook to d8, adding one more protection to this knight. Notice how all of black pieces are trying to protect this knight. And now, instead of playing a very slow move like rook to d3 and then getting this rook over here so as to create more pressure on this knight, Paul decides to get his other rook into the action by capturing this knight with this rook. So Paul plays rook into d7, black's rook takes the white's rook. And now this rook is pinned to the black's king. Paul gets the other rook into the action. He plays rook d1. And since the pressure is increasing over here, and this knight is not really able to participate in the defensive job because currently he is pinned to the black's queen. So black decides to play queen e6, unpinning the knight over here. Also notice how the dark sword bishop is now free to come out and helps black pieces in defending its king. But Paul doesn't want to give any time to black to save his game and therefore he goes for bishop into d7 check, forking the black king and the queen. And here the duo players decide to play the obvious normal looking move knight into d7. But this is a terrible mistake because now this move leads to a mate in two. Can you find the next brilliant move? Feel free to pause the video over here. Notice how black's king is badly stuck over here. He doesn't have access to these two squares as they are controlled by the white's bishop. So ideally if this knight was not sitting over here, then our rook could have easily checkmated the game by coming on the d8 square. So how do we get rid of the knight? Well, by sacrificing our queen, 
by getting our queen to the b8 square queen b8 check and it's a brilliant move because when the duo player decided to capture the bishop with their knight they did not expect white to sacrifice their queen now knight into b8 is forced and rook d8 leads to a brilliant checkmate if you are enjoying this video then hit the thumbs up button and quickly subscribe to my channel and here is an example of another famous game played between Adolf Anderson and Lionel Kisiretsky in the year 1851 and here it is white's turn in the game and I want you to find the brilliant move that was played in this game pause the video if you wish to notice how badly the black king is stuck here he cannot go to this square because it's controlled by our knight these two squares are under our knight's control again so all white needs to do is find a move that ends the game so in ideal scenario white would have loved to get his bishop over here and checkmate the black king but unfortunately black's knight is guarding this important e7 square so how do you get rid of this knight well you just need to sacrifice your material so what's the winning move over here so the winning move is queen f6 check black is forced to take the queen and now bishop e7 is a beautiful checkmate if you want to master your skills in chess then do join to the channel's membership program and before i sign off here is the question of the day for you it is white's turn in the game and i want you to figure out the brilliant move that white should play let me know your answers in the comments box and i'll see you in the next video